positive predictive value and negative predictive value can be tricky concepts to get your heads around, but I'm going to go through it in this video. Whereas sensitivity and specificity looks at the group of people who have the disease, positive and negative predictive value looks at how the test functions on the entire population. In sensitivity and specificity, everyone has the disease, but of course this isn't real life because when our patients come to us, we don't know if they've got the disease or not. That's why they've come to us normally and that's why we do investigations. So actually, if we're looking at the disease of appendicitis and the test of abdominal ultrasound, what I want to know is that for all the abdominal pain patients that come back with a positive ultrasound scan, what proportion of them actually have appendicitis? And that is more like a real world assessment that's more useful to us. So positive predictive value means that for all the patients who have a positive test, what proportion of them actually have the disease? So in our example, for all the patients who actually have a positive abdominal ultrasound scan for appendicitis, what proportion of them actually have appendicitis? So with a positive predictive value of 90%, that means of all the patients who we scan who come back with a positive ultrasound result, 90% of them actually have appendicitis. Negative predictive value is just the other way around. When I send my patients for an ultrasound, all the patients who come back with a negative result, what percentage of them are clear of appendicitis, that's the negative predictive value. With a negative predictive value of 90%, that means all my patients who come back with a negative ultrasound scan, 90% of them don't have appendicitis, but 10% of them do. So the interesting thing about positive predictive value and negative predictive value is what I work out as positive predictive value might be different from another clinician in another location. And that's because positive predictive value does depend on prevalence. If I've got a population of a thousand children with abdo pain and 1% of these children have appendicitis. That means out of my population of a thousand, 10 children will have appendicitis and 990 children will not have appendicitis. If the sensitivity is 90%, that means out of these 10 children who have appendicitis, if I do an ultrasound scan on them, nine out of the 10 will come back with a positive ultrasound result, but one of them will have a negative result even though they've got appendicitis. That's a false negative, so 10% false negatives. If the specificity is 90%, that means when I look at all the people who don't have appendicitis, in that group, so that's 990 people, that means 891 of them will come back with a negative test, but 99 of them will actually have a positive ultrasound, even though they don't have appendicitis. So as a total, as a clinician, you can see that if you run that test on your 1,000 patients, that means you're going to get 108 positive results back from running an ultrasound. So as a clinician, if you're doing an ultrasound test on that group of a thousand patients with abdominal pain, 108 of them are gonna come back with a positive ultrasound result. But of that 108, only nine actually have appendicitis. So your positive predictive value is actually only 8%. And that's because the prevalence is so low. Prevalence really affects the positive predictive value. If instead in that group, the prevalence of appendicitis in your group of a thousand children with abdo pain was 25%, the prevalence would dramatically change. So in that group now, you've got 250 people with appendicitis and 750 people without appendicitis. And we'll work through it again. If the sensitivity is 90%, that means if you take all the people who actually have the disease, so the 250 people, 90% of them are gonna come back with a positive test. So there'll be 225 people with a positive ultrasound scan and there will be 25 people with a negative scan, even though they have appendicitis. If you look at the specificity, so we look at all the patients who don't have appendicitis in that group, so that's 750 people. Out of that, with a specificity of 90%, that means 90% of them will have a negative ultrasound. So 675 will have a negative ultrasound scan, but 75 will come back with a positive scan result. So as clinicians, if we run that test on a thousand patients with abdo pain, what we found is that we've got 300 patients with a positive ultrasound scan result. And of these, actually 225 of them do have appendicitis. So that's a positive predictive value of 75%. So when the prevalence jumps from 1% to 25%, what we see is that the positive predictive value jumps from 8% to 75%. So in sensitivity and specificity, what we're doing is looking at the overall test function. When we get a population of people who have the disease, how well does the test function? Here, it doesn't matter what the prevalence of the disease is because everyone in the group has the disease anyway. In negative and positive 
to predictive values, we're looking at how the test performs in the real world. We know that some people have the disease and some don't, and we want to know how well the test will do to pick that up. Here, not everyone getting the test has the disease, and that's why the prevalence affects the positive predictive value. So if you're comparing positive predictive value and negative predictive value across two different groups, make sure that the population in the groups are comparable, otherwise you're gonna get very different results because you'll have a very different prevalence. Because prevalence really affects the positive predictive value and so the clinical utility of a test, that's why it's not a good idea to do an abdominal ultrasound in every child who presents with abdominal pain. What you want to do is to narrow down who you're scanning so that the prevalence is higher, so you're scanning a group that are more likely to have appendicitis, that means your test is going to be more useful because your positive predictive value is going to be higher. So that's why the children we send to scan, we think about who is it we're going to send to scan. It'll be based not just on abdo pain, but on other things, maybe them having right iliac fossa tenderness, maybe their CRPs raised or whatever. So you're adding lots of factors that help you to focus your group so that your prevalence is higher before you do the test because it's going to make the test more useful.